At the gallop! Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Afternoon, Captain. Afternoon. What'll it be? Oh, glass of rye. Yes, sir. Hey, you uh, Captain. Afternoon off? No. I just came in to talk to Smithson about some freighting. Well, here's luck. Well, no. <clears throat> Thank you, Captain. Thought that was a soldier's mount out front. What is that? Hello, Captain. Banyan. <laughs> you surprised? I didn't expect to see you here. Thought you'd be long gone from these parts, Banyan. Gone, come back, and on my way again. Huh? To where? Oh, I think I'll try California, San Francisco this time. I uh, hear it's a nice place. San Francisco. Even this place is nice when you aren't in the army. <laughs> hey, like a drink? I don't mind. Another uh, glass here, bartender. Coming right up. Yeah. How's civilian life? Oh, you should try it, Captain. Nobody, nobody issuing orders from Washington all the time, you know. Orders telling you to do something foolish about <laughs> some other foolish thing. I don't suppose any of that's changed much. Oh, Washington never changes. Oh. All right, gents. Hey, yeah. Thanks, Quince. <clears throat> In for the day? Nope. Oh, I'm on my way back right now. Oh. And I thought you might like to join me. Doing what? Nice poker game going on over there. They've been at it two days, two nights now. Now, that fellow there in the Stetson from Montana, he's winning a lot. But he's getting pretty tired. I figure it's just about time for me to walk in <laughs> with a good night's sleep. Don't you? Might be. Yeah, that's how I look at it. Just figure I'll have him wore down in, oh, six, seven hours. About the time you're sitting horse at retreat. They still have that, don't they? Retreat. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for the drink, Captain. Captain. Hmm? That fella you were just talking with. Been around here two or three days. Don't seem to know what to do with himself. Uh, fill this up, will you? Sure. Seemed familiar in a way, though. Soldier, was he? <clears throat> he was in the army. But he was never a soldier. Yeah, see you later. Oh, 
At ease. At ease. Bright and shining for dress parade, soldiers. Bright and shining. Well, how soon, Sergeant? They'll sound off any minute, soldier, and you just hope you're not late. Well, I thought this was a fighting outfit. How's that? Well, we had a dress parade last week, Sergeant. And there may be another next week. I just want to hear wind going by me when that bugle blows. Just wind. When the dust settles, B Company better be all present or accounted for. Carry on. Company will make a good showing, sir. It had better, Sergeant. Yes, sir. The book says a clean soldier's a good soldier. Yes, sir. And Major Daggett goes by the book. All right, Gorse. Call the men in. Yes, sir. Oh, and Gorse. Sir? Be sure Trooper Lineley stays awake this time. is formed. Thank you, Post, sir. Dismiss the parade, sir. Parade is dismissed. Officers, forward, guide, center, turn. Officers, ho! You're to be complimented, gentlemen. The troopers were well turned out. There are no orders to be published, so that's all, gentlemen. You walking over to the mess, Quince? Oh, 
I'm going back to the orderly room. Corporal Mercer has got some reports for me. I'll, I'll see you at the mess later, Mead. All right. Retreat parade is still just the same, isn't it? How did you get on this post? Pretty simple. Just told the sentry I wanted to enlist in the army. What do you want, Banyan? I wasn't lying to the sentry. I want to enlist. You don't have any use for the army. You didn't while you were in. You're going to try to talk me out of it? Come on in. Didn't that poker game turn out too well? Oh, that fella from Montana, he, he wasn't as tired as he looked. He cleaned me out. So I guess I'm not going to San Francisco. Men don't usually enlist in the Army for just a meal and a bed. Oh, that's right, Captain. You generally find a meal and a bed any place. Why do you want to get back in the Army, Banyan? Now, once before, I filled out an enlistment blank. And I saw things asking me my full name and where I was from and how old and if I had prior service and all things like that. I never saw a line on one of them asking why. Hmm. Corporal Mercer. Yes, sir. Will you tell the doctor I have a recruit to be examined? Yes, sir. Fill this out. Oh, sure. If you're physically acceptable, I'll swear you in tonight. Oh, I got a civilian horse and some other things back in town. Then you can go back to town and dispose of them. Report back here first thing in the morning. Yeah. I hope you know what you're doing, Banyan. I thought on it. Long time I thought on it. All prisoner accounted for, sir. All right, Sergeant. Dismiss the company. Yes, sir. Sergeant Garth. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to talk to you. We, uh... We have a new man coming in today, Sergeant. Non-commissioned officer. A non-com, sir? That's right. This company? This company. He transferred out here, sir? He re-enlisted. It's... Will Banyan. Banyan? Banyan served six years. He was entitled to three stripes coming in. Captain. What is it? Banyan never could forget he was related to some officer on the general staff back in Washington. He held that up in front of everybody. It was kind of touchy then. Could be the same all over again. That isn't quite clear. Well, some of the officers didn't know how to take him. Neither did the men. He just got himself some easy stripes. Easy or not, he's got them, Sergeant. You asked me to keep this company running, sir. I like to keep it running. There's no place for Banyan and me both. I'll see you after mess. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Morning, Mr. Washburn. 
Banyan, you may be in civilian clothes right now, but you're in the army again. Now get in your feet. <laughs> you know where the mess hall is located? Well, no, I think I can still remember. As where... soon as you've had your breakfast, report to Sergeant Gorse. He'll take you over to AQM stores. All right, sir. Mr. Washburn. Uh, yes, sir. Did you read the special orders this morning? Yes, sir, I did. Did you notice that Will Banyan holds the rank of sergeant? Yes, sir. Then just remember you hold a commission. He's a sergeant. Yes, sir. But, but I thought... I mean, you and Sergeant Gorse... Uh, uh... You thought incorrectly, Mr. Washburn. Yes, sir. Had your breakfast? No, sir. Oh, come on. Captain. Hmm? Lieutenant Seibitz and I were talking a while back. Sergeant Gorse isn't going to like another sergeant around. He doesn't like it, Mr. Washburn, and I don't like it. But we have to put up with it. Yes, sir. I'll remember that. Housewife Kit, Bridle, Lariat and Hobbles. Bridle, Lariat, Hobbles. Picket pin, yeah. razor, mirror, soap, comb. Right. Two blankets. Two blankets? Bacon can, curry comb, collar ornaments, cross saber, Colt revolver. Yeah. Springfield carbine. Carbine? Canteen and mess outfit. Canteen and mess outfit. Check? Check. All right, stow them away, Sergeant. Uh, sure, Sergeant. When you're squared away, report back here. Sure. Oh, Captain. Carry on, Sergeant Banyan. Yes, sir. All right, Gores, as you were. Yes, sir. Gores, where are you putting Banyan? With Corporal Hunter, sir. Can you... Can you put him in your quarters? Sir? I'd like him to live in your quarters. I'd just as soon he didn't, Captain. But that's the way we're going to do it. Captain, I got to speak my mind, sir. All right. No man ever come in this company I couldn't break in, but you're asking me to handle a three-striper that's got a general working for him in Washington. You're asking me to treat him like a sergeant when he ain't a good enough man to be a private in anybody's company. Sergeant? You told me to speak out, sir. Well, there's only room for one sergeant here. Now I'm telling you to shut up, sergeant, and stay shut. Yes, sir. That's all. Captain Gwynn's reporting, sir. Oh, at ease, Captain. I uh, have a request from Sergeant Gorse asking for transfer to Fort Lincoln. Oh? He gave the reason that he intends to marry a girl living in that area. That's a lie, isn't it? He's not intending to marry anyone, as far as I know, sir. Then it's Banyan? Sergeant Gorse feels that Banyan's rank is unfair. It is up to you to convince him that Banyan's rank was automatic when he re-enlisted. Sergeant Gorse can't regard it in that light, sir. He feels that Banyan's influence in Washington helped him get the rank. Not only that, but Banyan's rating moves back the others a whole notch. Your company could go sour because of him. I don't intend to allow that, Captain. You'll, uh, you transfer Banyan? I'll transfer Gorse, if that's what he wants. Sir, uh... Oh... Gorse is the most valuable man. We I... can't have this kind of discontent in the company. 
And Gorse has requested transfer. His rank and seniority in service require me to give the request consideration. I'll wire Colonel Thaler at Fort Lincoln today and ask if he'll accept Sergeant Gorse. I'm sure he'd be glad to. Major, could you... Would you withhold that application? I don't want to lose Gorse or Banyan. I'd expect to keep them both. Well, I thought I'd talk with Sergeant Gorse once more. I had the impression once that Banyan's reenlistment was a casual thing. No man enlists in the Army casually. Yes, sir, that's exactly it. And I'll set this aside till I hear from you. Thank you, sir. Kind of peaceful this way. Hmm? I said it's kind of peaceful, Captain. I like this time of night best on a post. You do. Oh, yes, sir. You know, I feel kind of sorry for Seibert's pulling O.D. on a night like this. A cigar, Captain? Huh? Oh, oh, no thanks. Well, I I think I'll take a stroll. Like to come along? I believe I'll... Uh, Come along, Mr. Washburn. Oh, yes, sir. Captain. Hmm? Is it true, I mean, about Sergeant Gorse wanting a transfer? I... Yes, it's true. Because of Banyan? Mm Mm-hmm. Sergeant Gorse is the best man I've ever seen in his job. Be difficult to replace him. It would... It would indeed. Evening, Captain. Lieutenant. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Oh, uh, Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. Step over here, will you? I ask the Major not to act on your transfer till tomorrow morning, Sergeant. All right, Captain. Chances are, in another outfit, you'd meet another Sergeant wearing stripes like yours. I guess that's right enough, but only one of us should be wearing them here. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Mr. Washburn? Why? In all fairness. Well, uh, I'm inclined to agree with Sergeant Gore, sir. So am I. And I think Lieutenant Seibert's would, too. How's that, Captain? You heard me. There's room for only one sergeant in this outfit. Do I understand the Captain? It's not up to the Major or myself to settle this. It's the sergeant's business. Do I understand you, sir? Yeah, I think you do. Yes, sir. I think I do. Will the captain and lieutenant excuse me, sir? Good night, Sergeant. Sir, he understood you, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, He's sir. going to look up Sergeant Banyan, Mr. Washburn, and the chances are only one of them will be sergeant by morning. Best man of the two. Yes, sir. But who is the best man? Sergeant Gorse has just gone to settle that question, I think. Come on, Mr. Washburn. Captain, sir. Banyan? I I have a request to make of the captain, sir. And what is it? I wish to be relieved of my stripes, sir. I thought you might request transfer, but I didn't think... No, sir. Not a transfer. I I want to stay here in, in this company. I see. Once the captain asked me why I re-enlisted in the army... I could answer the captain now. Go ahead, Banyan. Yes, sir. I, I I served in the army once with 
with a general back of me. I failed that time. I thought I hated the Army, but I came back because I hated failing worse. Does this make any sense to the captain? Yes, it does. Yes, sir. I told the captain I thought about it before I came back in, I, I, and I knew I'd have sergeants pay. I didn't know I was starting to fail again. I know that now. Last night... <laughs> last night, Sergeant Gorse explained some things to me. We talked it over outside the fort. Mm hmm. Um, what happened to your face? I fell off my horse, sir. A good cavalry soldier falls off his horse sometimes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Captain. I don't mean to again. Lee. Oh, morning, Major. Hey, isn't that Will Banyan and Sergeant Gorse together? Why, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Where'd they fight it out? Off the compound, sir. Yeah, that's good. Lee, why'd you let Banyan re-enlist in the first place? He wanted to. And he had guts enough to come back here where he'd failed and try again. Yeah, that coffee from the mess hall? Mm-hmm. Smells good. Come on. Yes, sir. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by E. Jack Newman, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Jack Moyles, Paul Duboff, James Nusser, John Daner, Sam Edwards, and Lou Krugman. Company, attention! Dismiss! Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Little boys can be the most exasperating creatures on earth. They can also be very amusing and lovable indeed. A CBS radio dramatic series that makes the most of this fact is that delightful program called My Son Jeep, heard every evening Monday through Friday over most of these same stations. Focusing on the adventures and misadventures of the most normal of all small boys, the story of My Son Jeep is hilarious and heartwarming by turns, just like its hero. Hear My Son Jeep, Every evening, Monday through Friday, right here on CBS Radio.